A side break fall in Japanese is referred to as a yoko yakemi. So yoko means side, yakemi means break fall. So the side break fall is probably the hardest break fall that people have to get the hang of, but it's also the most useful. So you need to get the hang of how to do a side break fall. So to do a side break fall, I'll just show you what one is. There's a side break fall. I'm finishing with my hand at 45 degrees, my feet in this position, and my right hand is resting on this top leg. This is a traditional way to finish a side break fall. We don't want to cross our legs or anything like that or have them splayed on my left hand up here. The left hand is at 45 degrees, the feet are finishing in a nice position, and that hand's here. Now from here, if you want to get up, you move this hand to the, to the, the knee here, roll up, and we're good to go again. Now, a side break fall is very similar to uh, if you're kicking a uh, place kicking, rugby league or rugby union or soccer, where if there's a ball here, I'm setting that back leg and then I'm following through with this left leg to kick the ball. Now, when we do that, I need to, a lot of people have some problems with side break falls for a few reasons. The first thing I try to do is when they go down, they stick their arm out straight. Straight away, if I do that, I'm gonna break my shoulder, my wrist, or my elbow. Not a really a good look. And I haven't really finished in a good position either. So what I need to do is I need to do a really nice single leg squat on this right leg. So when I come in, I'm bending that knee. If you ever watch a soccer or a rugby match, the guy doesn't come in with a, with a straight leg. There's no balance in that. So when I take a step forward, I do, and I, this left leg slides through, it's gonna slide. See how I'm doing a single leg squat? And this is a really nice way to practice. Now from here, I come in and hit the mat, and look at my hands finish up in a nice position. From here, in some clubs, they let you get up like this and get up off the mat. But traditionally, you're not allowed to put your hands on the mat, especially if you're doing the carter. So from here, you put that hand on here, and you get up like that. Make sure you're facing you know, the judges if you're doing it in the carter. So this is how you do a side break for. What you've got to tend to look out for is, for one, keeping this leg straight. That's not going to give you enough, enough balance. If I fall from here, it's actually quite far to hit the ground, and I can get a little bit scared. But the more I bend this leg, the easier my side break fall is. But if, if I only bend it to here and then drop, it's quite a far distance. So I really encourage you to practice this. See how low I got to the ground? Again, bending that, and look how low I get. And finish in a nice position with my hand, and my feet, and my right hand here. That's how you do a proper yoga yukemi. A back break fall is one of the fundamental break falls you need to know in judo. A back break fall is really useful when people are throwing you with koa chigari, o chigari, osoto, and any sort of backwards technique. In Japanese, a back break fall is referred to as a yashiro, or back, and yukemi, so a yashiro yukemi. Uh, a few common mistakes people tend to do with a, with a back break fall is a few things. The first things first, I'll just show you how to do one. So what tends to people tend to do wrong is they don't put their chin on their chest, which is vital for this entire technique. We don't want you to be doing judo and then you smash your head on the floor and you get a big headache or knock yourself out. Back break, break falls are used to you know, protect you. So what we're going to do is, the first thing you want to do is keep your chin on your chest. Because if I don't, when I get thrown, my head's going to hit the mat and I'm going to knock myself out and be in a lot of pain. So we don't want that. Second of all, so I want to keep my chin up, chin on my chest. Now with my hands here, I want to keep them at 45 degrees. Not at 90 degrees, or, 20, or 10 or 0, but 45 degrees. And lastly, my feet are going to be turned out a little bit, my knees slightly bent. So I'm in really nice control. I don't let my legs roll up, because that puts pressure on the legs. Now once again, when we're getting up, not hands on the mat, hands on the knees to hop up. So one more time, a lot of things people tend to do wrong with a back break fall is they fall from here. It's, it's really far. What we need to do is we need to get used to squatting down. Look, and we're not in a really nice position there. I'm dropping very close to the ground, opposed to being dropping from here. It's quite scary, especially if you're a beginner judoka. 
What we want to be doing is squatting nice and low. Look, finishing in a really nice position. Now you notice as well, mine's, it's, it rolls a little bit. What I don't want to do is stop the roll dead. See how that put a lot of pressure on my body? Let's have another look. Watch my neck and body. See how I jerk myself because I'm trying to stop the roll. We need to let the roll happen a little bit. So when I roll, see how I control my legs and it's much nicer. My hands are in a good position, my palms are facing down, my feet were out, my chin was up and in a nice position. So one more time. When you're doing your back break fall, the things to remember is, yeah, get as low to the ground as possible. The more you bend your knees in judo, the better your judo and easier you'll be at, at doing judo. So bend them down nice and low, roll, and finish in a really nice position. A forward break fall in Japanese is called a mawari yakemi. Now, mawari yakemi is probably the easiest break fall that people get the hang of because it's very similar to a forward break fall except we're going over the shoulder rather than over our head. And that's why a lot of people refer to these as a forward shoulder roll because we're going over the shoulder. So how I like to teach it, what I do, I put one foot forward and my one foot back like I'm going to go for a 100 meter sprint with my, both my legs are pointing the direction I'm going. Okay, so from here, if I'm, my left foot's forward, I'm going to go over my left shoulder in the sprinting stance. Put both my the middle fingers of my hands together and then I put them next to my front foot. Okay, my back foot's still pointing forwards. Now I turn my head and look at the, my back foot's toes. Now from here, I'm going to push off that back leg, rolling over this arm and I'm finishing in a nice position at the end of my forward break fall. If you just look at the end of this forward break fall, you notice where my feet have landed. The exact same position as the Yoko Yukemi or the side break fall. My hand is at 45 degrees, my feet have hit, and this hand is in that nice position just like I finished a side break fall. And that's really important because you need to have your hand, you need to have your... It's really important that you practice your forward break falls finishing in the down position. It's great to finish in a standing position, but to actually show control, you meant to stop yourself on the ground. So once again, front foot forward, back foot's pointing forward. My hands together and I face them back at myself and by, by looking at my back toe. I roll over that shoulder and I finish in a good position. So you notice where my feet have landed. These feet are hitting the mat. This hand is there, right hand is at 45 degrees. These are the positions we need to be finishing in when we do our mawari yukemi or forward break fall.